Okay. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Major Joe Phelan, and I'm here joined with some leadership from the Vermont National Guard to talk to you today a little bit about the COVID vaccine, the COVID vaccine program here in Vermont. So with that, I'm going to turn it over for introductions. Uh, once again, I'm Major Joe Phelan. I'm the commander for Company C Medical 186 BSB. I also work full time in the J3 helping out with the vaccine program. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Sarah Davis. I am the OIC of the Air National Guard, um, Vermont Guard, and I am sort of in charge of the clinical side of the COVID vaccine here and at the Air Base. Uh, Colonel Trevisani, I'm the Vermont Army State Surgeon as well as the Med Tech Commander. Now, Major General Greg Knight, the Adjutant General. Welcome and thanks for being here. I'm glad you could join us. So topic for today is the COVID-19 vaccine. So um, a lot of rumors out there, a lot of misinformation. So the intent for today is to really provide you information that's more accurate and, and you're not gonna get it from me because I get called a lot of things. Doctor is not one of them. Uh, I am not a nurse. I, I am not a medical services corps officer. Um, so uh, I'm going to turn it over here very shortly to the folks that, that have a great deal of information and expertise when it comes to the vaccine. Um, and I want to try to get at some of that misinformation that's out there. Um, it's, it's what it is. Uh, I, I think we're better served to make sure you have the right information at the right time. So listen, our job and my job in this role is to provide the governor and the National Command Authority ready forces. And I have my job and our job as an organization is to protect that readiness to ensure that our soldiers and airmen are protected, um, our teams are protected, and certainly uh, our families are protected. So um, we're going to talk quite a bit today. Um, I'm not going to be a part of that conversation. I'll turn that over to our, our medical um, expertise to handle that piece of it. But understand for our deploying soldiers and airmen, something for you to think about if you're on the fence about getting a vaccine. And we'll talk a little bit here in a, uh, a short while about uh, voluntary versus involuntary. Um, if you're deploying, I want you to think about something. You're going potentially to a very austere environment in a host nation. And the question you should be asking, in my view, is what medical resources are there within that host nation if it comes to COVID? Do they have ventilators? Do they have the proper care? Do they have retroviral drugs? Um, what kind of hospital infrastructure do they have? And should you contract COVID, how do we get you home safely if you're in rough shape? Um, those are hard questions to ask, um, but I would tell you to take a look at it, um, protect yourself and protect your team. Um, something else to consider, again, if you're deploying, we don't know the direction of this, this pandemic. Um, what's DOD policy right now if you're in theater and you end up contracting COVID? Can we even get you home? I don't know. Um, those are questions that we're certainly going to ask as we've got uh, soldiers and airmen deployed or getting ready to deploy. Look at your mid tour leave. For our, our Army folks, uh, our soldiers, what's the policy coming from theater if you're not vaccinated? Will they allow you to come back into the United States? Don't know, um, but something to consider. Let me give you a little vignette. So uh, last week, three members of, of my staff tested positive for COVID. I had had the first vaccine. I had just recently, uh, beginning of, of last week, had gotten the uh, second vaccine. And so there was some time for the second one to, to uh, for the body to uptake the vaccine. All that being said, they got sick and I did not. Was it because I was vaccinated? Uh, I don't know. Um, but we work in pretty close proximity, mitigating strategies or not. Again, they got sick, I did not. Um, I'm not the sharpest tack in the box, but I can do that math. Um, but something to consider, uh, again, our focus is readiness and protecting each other, protect our teams, our soldiers and airmen, and certainly our families. But I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Major Phelan, who's our Medical Services Corps officer. He's been central to testing and helping us out with vaccine distribution. So we've got a, a quick presentation here for you. Um, ask questions, um, and we do have a number of frequently asked questions that we'll be able to share with you. And, and provide some clarity and actual factual information um, that, that you can consider. So Joe, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks Thank for being you for that, here. Sir. Um, so <clears throat> with that, uh, we do have a few slides that we are gonna bring up here just to kind of guide the conversation. But 
Uh, as the general said, we would appreciate any insight or questions that you may have. And please, I encourage you to ask those throughout this process. We have a team behind the scenes that will answer or, or feed us those questions. And uh, the team here will help answer that, any, anything that might pop up. So with that, I'm assuming we don't have any right now. We can nope, just jump right into it. Okay. So why should I get the vaccine? Um, Oh, sorry, and I did. I didn't. I failed one. One last thing. Uh, the YouTube. I apologize. We don't have the slides up on your your site, but uh, they are available on the Teams. So as I talk through these, unfortunately, uh, we won't be able to share those with you. But um, that all said, so why should I get the vaccine? I, I think the the general did a great job explaining what the potentials are of or implications of not getting one would be. Um, but I guess. The biggest thing I would say is there's really only one way we're going to beat this pandemic, and that's through vaccination, right? Like there's no other way to. I mean, well, there is another way, but it's not very good, right? Yeah. Right. We, we know that herd immunity could work too, but it, with that, we will lose a lot of lives, and it's going to right. take a long time. So yes, yeah, so the whole so, idea is to get the whole country to herd immunity. Either you get the virus, or you get the vaccine to reach that. So. Right, and the the virus keeps. Um, having variants, so you can keep being reinfected. So can you just keep going and going? Um, yeah, I mean, I, so I, I guess from my standpoint, it's and from, from the generals, it's one, it's about maintaining our readiness so we can achieve our mission set, uh, but it's also about protecting others. And, and that's part of our job in and out of uniform. So I, I guess that's the best I could offer. Yeah, I agree. All right. So what does the vaccine do? Uh, and this is just a kind of a, a little bit over the top, but you know, what, what does the vaccine do? It, it helps your body produce antibodies, uh, which will help prevent the infection uh, of the COVID virus. Is that, I mean, that's a very basic, do you wanna expand it a little all on that or? Yeah, yeah and COVID is a virus and the, the I guess the false thing people think about a virus, that's it's a, a true living thing, all right? What it is, is it is a piece of a, a DNA that can get into your system and produce proteins that your body wants to fight um, to a point where if your body can't produce enough of the antibodies, that protein just kind of takes over and your body goes into this large inflammatory process, which we know can cause respiratory issues, organ failures, and death. So what the virus does, it try, it, it mimics that protein and and stimulate your body to start producing that antibody the antibodies to start fighting that that other infection that can lead to host problems with inflammation pulmonary problems stuff like that so the vaccine is just fooling your body that you're getting infected producing the antibodies so if you ever do get the virus you are protected and those antibodies are already present to kill that thing right away basically the vaccine gives your body a recipe to make those antibodies without actually getting the virus. And this this vaccine won't be administering live virus to you, there right? No, so there's no way for them to get COVID from this? There's no COVID in this vaccine. It's just the mRNA. Which codes for the, the, the code help build those antibodies. Um, so we we're talking a little bit about mRNA viruses or, or uh, mRNA technology and and viral technology. So one of the most common things that we've heard is that this is new technology and um, we want to wait and see what this new technology is. But truthfully, this has been around for decades um, and it's been used in other other processes, right, sir? Right, they try to do this in a vaccine in the past when, I mean, COVID, the COVID virus first came about with SARS back in 2012. Um, they actually produced the mRNA virus, but the, the vaccine, but we never needed it because SARS never spread like this. They've used that technology and, and they've used it for cancer um, and using, you know, they use this kind of goal-directed chemotherapy using the exact same te technology. Find, find, find that piece of mRNA that will attach and produce a certain antibody to attack a certain protein. And they can find, you know, so they can find that protein for cancer, attach it to this mRNA, and they can actually deliver the chemotherapy directly to the cells and cause this. So the technology isn't new. Um, it works beautifully for cancer for the last 10 years. Uh, it's safe, um, and it just makes common sense now to try to do this against a virus. 
They also, it makes it a lot quicker to develop these vaccines. So that's why this vaccine has come about quicker is because we already had the technology to make it and it's easier to make. Huh? The DNA. Oh, uh, it, so a lot of people have been asking if it can alter DNA. So yeah, 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 I guess what, that was the question. Yeah, okay. like, can it alter my DNA? Yeah, so I've heard that. there is no way it can alter the DNA because it doesn't ever enter the nucleus of the cell. So your DNA shouldn't be changed at all from this vaccine. No question. Uh, so the, the next thing that we've heard a lot about is uh, the emergency use authorization and that this might have been rushed through and it hasn't been properly tested. Uh, but the emergency use process that's utilized by the FDA um, is really just a subset of the larger, the larger process, the BLA process, um, which is ongoing as well. But there were thousands of, of individuals part of this process, correct? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, each vaccine had two different studies, which had over 20,000 people in it. You know, 10,000 got a placebo and 10,000 actually got the vaccine and they're able to kind of see how safe and effective they both were. Yeah. So primarily during phase three is when we sell those large numbers. Um, so from the FDA, I'm on the, the next slide, but um, according to the FDA, FDA they had 43,000 individuals end up participating in the Pfizer. Um, uh, phase three, and then 30,000 participated in the Moderna, um, which resulted in an efficacy of their in their studies. They found between 90 and 97 percent. Just fantastic. Which is exceptional. <laughs> they were hoping for 70, I think. Right? Yeah, I think this is yeah. better than most vaccines. Yeah. Obviously, it's better than the flu I've vaccine never for seen sure. Any like right. this. Yeah. Uh, so the the process they use included numerous trials. Uh, it also there, there were phases to these trials, and then it had to go before the FDA to be approved uh, and reviewed by an independent board of scientists and, and doctors, which I think is really important to consider. And then the, the BLA, the, the biological license application, which is the, the traditional method that, that vaccines would be approved under, uh, is ongoing, and we will likely see the results of that application sometime, I think they're saying six months is what you said, sir? Correct. So in, in about six to 10 months, maybe. So within the year, we should have full BLA applications uh, probably approved for these vaccines. So I think what the reason, I, I can't speak for the FDA, but um, you know, the, the, the pursuit of the emergency use authorization is to get this out there earlier to avoid more death because well, it's gonna take time. Yeah, the benefit outweighs the risk is what they're saying. Because the risk of the vaccine is very low, but the risk of COVID is a lot higher. So the risks, um, I think we've all had the vaccine at this point uh, and we've administered the vaccine to hundreds of soldiers and airmen and the risks, do you wanna to speak to some of the risks that we have um, with these vaccines? Yeah, the risks are, are very minimal. Um, and no, there's no doubt there can be an allergic reaction to something, um, no matter what the vaccine is. It doesn't have to just be the COVID vaccine. We know what the, we know what the components of the vaccine are and they're very basic stuff. There's lipids, there's a protein, and there's an mRNA in it. I mean, and it, it's a really, really basic type of thing. Uh, but it, but if, you, if you've had an mRNA injection for some sort, like we said with some of the cancers, and you've had an allergic reaction to it, yeah, you probably should not get this, this vaccine. Um, and that's the only really contraindication to not to, to take it is just if you have a known reaction to it. But you are, yes, is your arm going to hurt? Yes. Is it going to swell? Yes. Um, are you going to get the response of an inflammatory reaction? Yes. Like, which I mean is you're not going to, you don't actually have an infection, but we want your body to be fooled that it has an infection. So will you get a low grade fever? Will you get some joint pain? Will you feel a little nauseous? Will you feel a little tired and fatigued? Will, you're, you know, will you get some swelling in the lymph nodes in your armpit? Yes, that's that's what we expect to happen. It's not a it's not a side effect. It's not anything bad. It's your body appropriately responding to uh, something foreign that went into its body, and your built your body's building up those antibodies. So if you ever get hit with the COVID, it's ready to attack it. So what we've been seeing, and I myself, um, the first vaccine is tends tends to be more mild. The second one is the one that sort of knocks you down for a day or so, but it's just you know, overall feeling lousy, 
fatigue, you know, arm pain can be pretty significant, but it goes away pretty quickly. And that's just like he was saying, it's a good sign that your body is recognizing this and um, doing its job. And it's not a bad sign if you don't. And we, no. we, we've seen it um, reported, and, I, and I've seen it myself, that even old farts like me, who my yeah. immune system has probably seen a lot of crap, um, I don't get that l large reaction. The younger kids, um, they actually sometimes have a stronger reaction and that second shot hits them a little harder. It's not because it's working better on them or less on me, it's just I've been exposed to a lot more stuff. And as, as General said, the Army is stuck in a needle in my arm at least a billion times already, so. Right. Still better than anthrax. Still better than anthrax. <laughs> <laughs> and with, um, with this, the VSAFE program with the vaccine that you can participate in, um, they're finding that now that they have more information, they have over 2 million um, people participating, they're finding that the allergic reactions are actually less than what they first reported. So it's actually not as bad as they thought, which wasn't even bad to begin with. It was like 11 out of a million, and now it's Moderna's 2.8 people out of a million have the anaphylaxis. So it's gone down significantly. Which is kind of the same of any other vaccine you're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what your vaccine and the risk of that anaphylactic reaction is the same. Maybe even lower now with the Moderna but it's reporting. Yeah. But again, there's no latex in it, so you don't have to worry about latex allergy. There's no, no, mercury. no mercury. mercury in it, no egg product, no nothing. No yet. microchip. So, so, uh, you know, so if you have an allergic reaction to some of those no things. Preservatives. None right. at all. Not at know, all. Like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty basic formula. No gluten or soy, so you don't have to worry about food allergies. There's no, no kale, so sorry for the <laughs> runner. <sorry. laughs> no. no maple syrup. <laughs> also, a uh, question I was asked is, does it have fetal material in it? It does not. So it's not made with human babies. It's no stem cells. No, none of none that. Of that. Nope. Um, so we talked a little bit about the risks of getting it. Um, by not getting it, the risks are significantly higher, right? Because now we're not just talking about the risks, the mild risks of a vaccine. Now we're talking about the, the total risk of COVID. Um, so with COVID-19, I mean, I think that it speaks for itself, the risks, uh, but ultimately it, it could be as, as bad as entering a ventilator. Yes. Yeah, I think we got the you know we got the false sense of security here in Vermont. I mean, we've done a great job with COVID um, since the very beginning. We've seen a low rate of it. We've seen a low death rate of it. Um, we see other states that have had a high rec high effect of it. We've seen the effect just from these holidays. I mean, I think Halloween kicked our butt. I mean, when people were having Halloween parties, we saw the effect two weeks later. People got a little smarter during Thanksgiving with gathering and Christmas with gathering. Um, but we're no we're nowhere over this virus. I mean, it is real and it's still affecting a lot of people. And until we really get true herd immunity, which means that about 80% of the population has had some type of effect of this virus, it ain't going away. Um, and the question is, would you rather get COVID and have the risks of it causing, you know, acute respiratory problem? Who knows, even long-term problems. We don't know about the, per the viral pericarditis that it could cause or the long-term pulmonary fibrosis that could lead to restrictive lung disease down the road um, versus having a sore arm for a couple of weeks and a little mild reaction. You know, you know it, it's, it's, this is a serious disease, and I think we have a good answer for it. So how is it administered? Uh, I'm going to let you field this one. Um, you're running our clinical. Yeah, so when you come for your first one, there's a routine paperwork, and we'll do a little briefing on what to expect that day. You'll get your vaccine. We'll give you your, your little card to keep. And then you do have to wait with us for 15 minutes afterwards, just so we know that you're safe. Usually if you're gonna have an allergic reaction, it happens pretty quickly. And we're ready for that with epinephrine. Um, so we'll keep you safe. And then you're gonna come back again in 28 days and get your second one. This is Moderna. At this moment, we're just offering Moderna. If we end up with Pfizer, it's 21 days. If we end up with the new one, Johnson Johnson, if it's approved, that will just be one shot, so we, I don't know enough about that one yet. Um, but these are the, Moderna is all we have right now. Um, and it, obviously if you have questions when you're there, we're there to answer them. It is voluntary at this point, but we highly 
encourage you to listen to us and let us educate you further and you can think about getting it um, with the right information. The reason we only have Moderna here at the Guard, again, Pfizer and Moderna are very equally efficient. Mm -hmm. The big issue is storage of the vaccine itself. For Moderna, we can store it in a standard um, freezer for regular vaccines. For Pfizer, we have to have a sub-zero, sub-super special cold machine, which we just aren't going to get. And dry ice. And dry ice. Uh, so, you know, you'll, you'll, Pfizer's probably offered it in some of the major medical uh, hospitals because they actually have that capability to store it. We just don't. And we just figured with because both are very effective and very equal in their outcome, um, and it's it's much easier for us to store and take care of because right now you know, we know there's a very limited supply of this right now and we're being very cautious in our use and storage and safe and trying to use it as um, efficiently as possible. I think we've we've touched on many of these vaccine facts, but can the vaccine give me COVID-19? We've already discussed. No, it's not physically possible for this this vaccine right now to give it to you. Um, is it better to get natural immunity by getting COVID-19 rather than the vaccine? I think that there are some significant risks associated with uh, trying to get COVID-19 and use that immunity versus a vaccine. I would absolutely take a vaccine over the, right. the true COVID infection I, myself. Yes. And <laughs> also um, the vaccine, so the the actual infection, the COVID infection, they know that you might be covered for 90 days, but then there has been reinfection known. And then with the variants, you may not, you may be able to get it again. Where the vaccines have are proving to be somewhat covering the variants. They actually yep. are. Yep. So um, I'd rather get one, vac two vaccines than COVID three, four times. And then we, we spoke about this a little bit earlier, but COVID vaccine causing infertil in, uh, infertility or miscarriage. And I think it's just no, no, yeah. there's just no, <laughs> there's no link um, whatsoever or any data that would suggest that. Correct. So when can I receive it? Um, I'll, I'll field this one just to speak a little bit about the, the Army's plan uh, or the Vermont Army National Guard's plan for, for rolling it out. So the clinics that Colonel Davis talked about have been pre-scheduled. Right now we have them scheduled by unit by month and we tried to tie them to your pre-existing drill schedule to minimize the impact that it has on your civilian side. Um, if you're there, there is a schema out there that's on the screen right now that's directed both by the CDC and the Department of Defense and NGB. For the most part, Vermont National Guardsmen will fall into uh, phases one alpha and one bravo. Uh, and then anyone that's not captured there will, will likely fall into uh, phase one Charlie and phase two. But um, we're in phase one bravo right now on the Vermont National Guard side. We're administering vaccines to or prioritizing those who are deploying overseas for the reasons that we discussed earlier. Uh, and then our first responders as followed by uh, various other critical personnel and infrastructure that we have. And then the ones that are most outward facing and at most risk. But based off of the current plan, your your units will tell you when you're coming in to get your vaccine. You will have to come in twice based off of the requirements for the Moderna vaccine. Uh, and we have those those scheduled. We will also look at other opportunities and try to maximize your opportunities to access this vaccine. And, and it's really all based on our allocation by NGB uh, and, and the Department of Defense as to when we get these vaccines. So we have this great plan to, to administer these vaccines, but it's all dependent on when the vaccines actually arrive here in state. Now we've had good luck so far, they, they've been coming in. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to execute this plan on the Army side. And then on the air side, you guys, I think are a little ahead of us so your plan this weekend? Yeah, we're a, we're a smaller group, so that makes it a little easier. But yeah, this uh, coming Sunday, we've already filled most of the slots, I believe. But if you have decided you like it and are not on the list, please reach out to um, the medical group. Um, Chief Fitzgerald has built a big um, roster for that. So please um, reach out and we'll figure out a way that we could potentially get it for you or we'll schedule soon. So, so Joe, you just to confirm. So, for we're talking about everybody in the guard, right? So, we're talking about AGR, 
techs, Title five. Yeah. Uh, Title five. civilians, contractors, yeah. as well as MDA. So everybody. Everybody. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, again, some people might get the vaccine in their civilian practice. If so, we still need a copy of that card so we record that you got it. If you got your first shot and you're civilian, you're not going to get your second shot here. All right. You're going to continue that in with your civilian employer and you can't mix the vaccines. You can't get Pfizer for your first shot and Moderna for your second or vice versa either. Where can you receive it? Uh, primarily right now we're operating at two locations. It's right here at Camp Johnson and at the air base. And the reason we're, we're limiting it to those two locations right now is one, because of our allocation and two, because of the transportation and storage requirements. Um, so for right now, all units will be coming to one of those two locations in order to receive them. The, the phases that I, I listed below just kind of gives you a rough timeline of when you might expect to to see uh, the next you know the next stage of this this vaccination program, but again this is really all dependent on when the vaccines arrive here in the state. Uh, one thing I did leave out in the last one, which was uh, beneficiaries. We've been receiving a lot of questions about will my significant other um, if will they be eligible for it? And the, the specific guidance that we have from higher is that if you are eligible for TRICARE and currently are on TRICARE, you would be eligible to receive this vaccine. So anyone who is currently receiving TRICARE, whether it be TRICARE Prime, Remote, um, TRICARE Reserve, you would be eligible to, to get this vaccine in accordance with the phases. So uh, we Retire will- So that includes retirees then? It will include retirees and the VA is working on, on that, but it will, that will be a, a later phase that we'll have to address. Yep. Right now, our allocations are specifically for those that are coming in in one alpha and one bravo. So what to expect? Uh, I think we, we already went over what to expect when you arrive. You'll fill out some paperwork, you'll get a briefing, you get your, your vaccine, and then that waiting period after. Uh, there is that V safe, so you'll get some paperwork that talks a little bit about reporting, right? Yeah, it's not mandatory, but it's how they're finding the data that they're continuing to show us is through a voluntary, the V safe program. And it's very simple. It's literally takes a minute. And it's just reporting adverse reactions. Yeah, you get a little question. Yeah, it, they ask you um, every day, they'll send you a little text. How are you feeling? Yeah, it, it's super simple. Yeah. One thing I forgot to mention is if um, if you do, if you've had COVID, you still can get the vaccine. There's no, unless you're currently quarantined or currently sick with COVID, you can get the vaccine. Also, when you get the vaccine, they recommend either 14 days before to 14 days after you should not get a, another vaccine of any other kind. So for the deploy, you're deploying soldiers, we are, we are working on making sure you guys get set. Unfortunately, it was a kind of a short, window on what we on our current deploying soldiers you guys they're getting their, they're getting their first injection now and they'll get their second injection we're going to take care of that we're going to supply the vaccines for you guys going down to fourth list that when you go through your srp down there if you need to get a tetanus or smallpox or whatever you're not going to get it and that's a, a calculated risk that even the mob station agrees with covid's a bigger problem downrange than smallpox or anthrax or or I guess the only one that's more worrisome is we're going to go to Africa is rabies. Um, but other than that, uh, the COVID is taking priority. Is there any reason they can't take malaria prophylaxis? They can take malaria prophylaxis. Okay. Um, so one thing that might come up is if they if you do uh, decline or refuse, uh, that does have to be in person. They have to fill out the paperwork still. They still have to come through the clinic. Uh, but if you do decide that you change your mind or you want to get the vaccine, uh, we will always keep that door open just because you declined it at the first day. If you decide or change your mind later, we will always afford that opportunity for you to come back. Um, and then there was one, I'm not sure if we hit on this one, one question that comes up was, is it safe uh, if someone's pregnant or breastfeeding or intends to get pregnant? Um, 
or could possibly be pregnant, is it safe for them to get that vaccine, or what would the guidance be on that? Yeah, that's something you're going to have to discuss with your primary care doc. Right now, there's no data showing that it does cause problems with the mom, it doesn't cross the, uh, you know, the blood into the fetus, and it doesn't go to breast milk. Um, but, you know, again, it's still kind of a new vaccine. So the recommendation is if you are in a hot area where COVID is very hot, or you're in a situation where you're going to be possibly exposed to it, they're strongly recommending it to pregnant women. Um, but other than that, I think that it's, it's, it's going to be a discussion between you and your primary care doc and, and, and most likely probably going to say no. And again, it's not authorized for, you know, well, Moderna's not for under 18 and Pfizer for not under 16, so. I think kids are going to be more like late spring, early summer when they're going to potentially get that. So go ahead. Okay. So with that, I think we've covered everything we wanted to cover. Is there any questions from the field so far? Uh, so has anyone died from COVID? Or after? Yes. No? <laughs> <laughs> like uh, four, 450,000. Oh, okay. A few. Has anyone the... died after getting the Moderna vaccine? not specifically related to the vaccine do people die after being vaccinated sure but they haven't been able to link it directly to the vaccine okay um, so why is it that the pfizer and moderna comes in two doses why is that necessary it's just to improve the immunity. We know with the first dose, you're going to have, I think it reports about 65 to 70 percent uh, effective. Um, then you wait till your body builds up those antibodies. And with that second dose, you get that, that extra boost. And then you build up that 95 percent effective um, ability with that second dose. So it just it gives you better immunity. We don't know how long that immunity lasts at this point. Um, there's a chance you might need a booster in the future, but at this point, that's where we're at. And if they've had COVID-19, they should still get the vaccine. Correct. 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 Once you're asymptomatic, right? Okay. You're asymptomatic time. And there's been, and there's some folks in the beginning um, who are on this trial for using, you know, you know, they took the blood of someone who had COVID-19, got the antibody, and they injected that antibody into you as part of a trial you are not eligible to get this vaccine for 90 days after that because we know because we know when you got the infection with that COVID, we know there's a 90% or at 90 days, there's an increased risk you can get that uh, infection again. So if anybody was on that antibody, initial antibody trial, you're, you're exempt from getting this. Uh, so after getting the vaccine, could you test positive for COVID-19? You can, but not from on the, the vaccine. On, from the antibody test. Yeah, your antibody, you you could have a positive antibody test, but the the swab The viral test won't yeah, no. come back positive. No. It won't come back positive from the vaccine, but you still may potentially contract COVID, but your body hopefully will defend it before you get sick from it. And that's why we still wear our masks after we get the vaccine, because you maybe could spread it to others, but not as hopefully as readily as if you didn't have the vaccine. We'll get out of these masks once we get to herd immunity. Once we get 80% of the population either exposed to COVID or vaccinated, then we can probably finally get out of these masks. So yeah, the, just because you're getting your just because you're getting your COVID vaccine doesn't mean you can take your mask off and walk around the community and do stuff. You still got to continue with social distancing and washing your hands, putting a mask on, and doing everything right until the until the community is. So we're at the point where we can't pass that virus on back and forth to each other. I, so. I like the masks. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Less flu, less cold. My kid's not as flu. sick. It's been great. <laughs> I like this. That is true. The flu has actually gone way down because yeah. of this. Yeah, I, I work way at, down. It's amazing. I work at, at UVM at the hospital there, and I was talking to our pediatricians, and you know, the croup and the RSV virus is at an all-time low. It's unbelievable how uh, our pediatric wards are not filled with people in their little respiratory tents anymore. It's amazing. Great. It's, uh, it, you know, this does work, which we've been telling people so, for years. So. 
Yeah, my kids haven't had a runny nose in ages. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, are they going to school, though, too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Yeah. Um, so how long do they – I know you mentioned there might be a booster in the future. Do they have any sense yet of what timelines look like? Not to my knowledge. I know they're preparing. Right. Um, that's that's going to be the part of that phase three trial of what's going on right now, you know, seeing how long those those people have immunity, seeing what happens a year from now, two years from now. I know they're making the they're prepping vaccines for the variants too. So, so speaking of boosters, for the, yeah, yeah. would that be another two rounds or maybe just be uh, a one shot? Time I have still. no idea. Yeah. Uh, with the booster, so with this second, that second dose, we do. It's not so strict. We the goal is 28 days. We we have a window of time, but the colonel did mention earlier that there is some level of, of immunity that you get with just one. Um, but it is our intent to to give every single soldier and airman their full two doses in state. Yeah. So yeah, that that strict 28 days. I mean, we prefer it, but there is that four day grace, four day grace period before and like a two week grace period after. So there is a there is a range we can get people in. So if you're not getting it exactly at 28, it's not a big deal. Yeah. So. And then I've read that uh, immunity. There's some early evidence that shows uh, may last longer from the vaccine than it does from actually contracting COVID, right. even if I'm asymptomatic. Is that right? That is what I understand as well. Right. Yeah. I think, I think they, we're seeing people who have had COVID. Like I said, the 90 days is that big deal. They have been been able to get reinfected after 90 days. We're not seeing that with the first trial with with the vaccine. I thought it was six months out. They still are pretty highly protected. Protected. But that's as much data as they have. So that's a good sign. Though. So do you think uh, once my family? Uh, say my family, or at least the adults in my family, get vaccinated the full round, uh, and Major Phelan's family is is vaccinated. Uh, can can we do a play date with our kids without masks on? <laughs> I'm not going to say yes. I'm going to say no. <laughs> I would say no as well. Absolutely, not until we get to that 80% total people who have had some type of exposure to COVID. So the sooner we get this done then the sooner we can say yes. I miss my family. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> True. Uh, so so we've seen that these vaccines are coming through Operation Warp Speed. What, what is that? that okay, a, so, I, I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a joint effort um, between the Department of Defense, Department of Health, and numerous federal agencies uh, and okay, civilian okay. partners to uh, to roll out this vaccine as quickly as possible. And I, I think it's, I mean, it, they're achieving their objective. I know there's been a lot of discussion and frustration about vaccines not getting sent fast enough. Um, but I mean, we have vaccines here in state. We're actively vaccinating uh, the guardsmen. If anything, um, if we see any slowdown or issues or, or hold up with our allocations, uh, we will address it, but right now, all indications are that we have enough vaccines to achieve our objectives. Yeah, warp speed has nothing to do with the preparation or making of the vaccine. Uh, what, what the warp speed does, again, like, like, like the major was saying, you know, it's it's how do we get this? How do we get the vaccine out? And the one thing that the military does very well is logistics, probably definitely better than the regular government, and using our assets and how to we move supply, move people, move personnel. Uh, that's the whole idea of the warp speed, uh, using, using the military to get this vaccine into people's arms. It's just because we are really, really good at logistical stuff. So does Operation Warp Speed and the vaccines that we have uh, detract from the state's efforts to uh, distribute their vaccines at all? They do not. So we're talking about two separate lines of effort, as we would call it, but there's an allocation to the state of Vermont, uh, primarily to use for Vermont citizens. And then there's an allocation that comes directly to the National Guard, which is allocated through the Department of Defense. So we're not we're not sharing supplies. They're completely separate efforts, and and we are not detracting from one or the other. What we're doing in the Guard is not warp speed. What we're doing for the state is. Okay. Um. Yeah. 
No questions right now. All right. Do you want to close it out? Yeah. I mean, um, so I, I appreciate you logging in uh, and watching this. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out. I work full time. This is my full time duty at this point, and it's my my purpose and my job to to give you uh, or get you the right information, the facts, and answer any questions or concerns you might have. Um, with that, do you have any anything to close out with, or is there anything? No, oh, again, I just I just said it's not it's not our time to get complacent. All right, we this this virus is real. I know it's been a year. Um, and, you know, to be a soldier and do the right thing. Again, I'm not saying you have to get the vaccine, but at least the minimum do. Make sure you're wearing your mask, make sure you're washing your hands, make sure you're doing social distancing. When you're eating lunch, make sure you're six feet apart. We're social creatures, I get it. You wanna to carpool together, you wanna to eat lunch together, you wanna to go out to dinner together, but just do it properly. We're seeing it, we're still seeing the spread um, here in the state and here through the guard. Um, so just, just be very diligent, don't be complacent. Um, if you see someone doing not the right thing, you know, be a leader and tell them to do the right thing. And I do. I strongly recommend that you get the vaccine. I think it's the best thing. It's going to help you. It's going to help get the force ready. We're going to support whatever state mission, government mission, national mission that we need to do. And eventually, if, if we get the whole country finally at herd immunity, we all get these masks off and get back to our life. And to that end, the Secretary of Defense just issued an order uh, or last couple of days mandating mask wearing and, and those COVID mitigation measures on, on federal property, correct? Correct. So it's, it's no longer guidance, it's now an order. All right. All right. So with that, thanks again. Look forward to talking to you in the future. Had one.